Despite the fact that makeup in all categories has seen huge popularity in recent times, the eyes remain the most sought after makeup feature. There's not a single person that I know that is not fascinated or even obsessed by eye makeup, or at least curious about it. As a makeup artist, eye makeup opens a whole world of creativity right there. From keeping it simple, which might be the hardest thing to do, to blowing it out of the park with creative talent, the eyes remain this mysterious, limitless canvas. Unless you're looking at a pair of eyes before you and you're strapped for ideas because you cannot work with the shape. As a makeup artist, it's really crucial to recognize the different eye shapes to be able to engage in the scope of artistry that just the eyes present to you. To be able to determine the eye shape of a customer, here are a few guidelines that will help you through. But again, remember that as with the face shapes, eye shapes also may not be instantly recognizable. Although pretty simple to determine, as an artist particularly, you have to keep your own eyes peeled and do the right thing by the eye shape. Misplaced application of eyeshadows and eyeliners can dramatically change a makeup look for the worse. But done with understanding and care, eye makeup can be very attractive and immensely gratifying. A few things that you must know without ever fumbling is that there are a few common eye shapes that are generally used to describe the eyes. These include almond eyes, round eyes, monolids, droopy or downturned eyes, and upturned eyes. These eye shapes may be differently set in each individual space. For example, wide set, close set, deep set, and protruding. One look at a person's eyes and some of the above mentioned features of their eyes will become very obvious to you as an artist. You will know instinctively what may or may not work in terms of textures, colors, and shapes for each set of eyes. But to get there, you need to have a deeper understanding of how different eyes qualify under these determining factors. Here's a closer look at how you may determine an individual's eye shape and positioning on a face. In some cases, the crease of the eye drops heavily into the eyelid, giving the impression of a large brow bone and a small eyelid. This kind of an eye is classified as a hooded eye. Again, like the monolid, Hooded eyes present some problems in eye makeup. Using bright or light colors on the eyelids brings the lid back into focus. Also, eyeliners tend to stick to the top of the lid, so it's wise to apply and request the individual to keep the eyes closed until dry. Well, our model here has uh, typically what you would refer to as hooded eyes. Now, the reason being, as you can see very closely, the upper lid, the, the brow bone almost drops onto the lid. So that, that's typically how a hooded eye looks. There are some cases in which this part of the eye, the lid on this side, the inner corner of the eye is more visible, but the brow bone drops over the crease and the lid on the outer end of the um, eyes. That also could be described as a hooded eye. Now, the thing with this kind of eyes is you need to kind of cheat a crease, but not very deliberately. You can't really draw anything because there's no real space here to draw a crease. But having said that, smoky eyes look really nice on this kind of an eye shape because smoky eyes are typically what would give this kind of an eye shape the illusion of a crease. The reason being, you start very intense right here at the lash line with a color and then you slowly blend off towards the brow bone. And the edge of the blended off color looks like a crease. And that's typically the kind of eye makeup that would look really nice on a hooded uh, pair of eyes. A monolid is very easy to make out due to the complete absence of a crease. The crease is deeply folded into the eye and it's not even visible. Oriental eye shapes are commonly monolids. Monolids can be difficult to work with as the eye area does not present one with a prominent eyelid. Most of the makeup disappears into the heavy top lid. In this case, intense application at the lash line that slowly blends off upwards towards the brow gives the eyes a much needed lidded effect. Well, monolids are normally, like the name suggests, mono means single and lid is a lid. So in this case, what happens is the crease completely disappears into the fold and chances are that you won't even see an eyelid. Uh, in our model's case, she does have a tiny hint of an eyelid, but having said that, most of her eyelid has disappeared into the crease. Uh, so the clever way to do makeup in this has a lot to do with hooded eye as well. These two eyes can have the same kind of effect in makeup. Um, you start by intensifying the lash line. The lash line is where all the focus needs to be. 
and then you smudge as you go outwards. This kind of softens the eye, it gives it, the, uh, you, you get the perception that the eye is bigger and also it gives the suggestion of a soft crease. Now by drawing a crease deliberately here, you'll actually distort the shape of such an eye. The better thing to do is kind of sweep the color into a softness towards the uh, brow bone. Um, smoky eyes work really well on this kind of eye shapes. Also what works very well is liners. So liners because thick liners, they can take really thick liners, you'll be surprised to know. Because no matter how thick you draw the line, once they open the eye, it disappears inside. So it gives the, uh, the idea that there's a you know, thick liner on the eyes. Uh, cat eyes work really well on these kind of eyes. They also lift the eye. So several things actually work on the monolid. Uh, I really like also the use of soft, ma medium matte shades or bright pops of color all in a smoky eye style. They look really fabulous on this kind of eye shape. Droopy eyes tend to slope downwards at the outer corners of the eye. They tend to give the illusion of sleepy eyes or sad eyes. While droopy eyes have been celebrated through the ages as being mysterious and intense, they need a few tricks to make them enchanting. Too much depth and darkness around them can cause them to appear more downturned. Instead, applying an eyeliner that picks the eyes up at the corners will make the eyes appear instantly lifted. Uh, our model's case, we can clearly see that she has downturned or droopy eyes. But in case you want to determine uh, this eye shape and be sure that her eyes are droopy, you can take again a stirrer or a thin brush and hold it right in the center of the eyeball against the nose and you will see that the outer corner of the eye does droop below the brush. That's a pretty clear indication that she has droopy eyes. Now in this case, what you don't want to do is draw harsh lines along the eyes that make the eyes look droopier. And we are very attractive and very sought after uh, eye makeup looks that have this droopy, perhaps the 1920s if you watched one of the history videos all the eyes were droopy and they were deliberately um, uh, made to look like that. But having said that, anything that's dark right on the rim of the eyes, both up and down, will make the eyes further droop. What you want to do ideally in this kind of eye shape is pick up the eyes so they're lifted from the outer corners of the eyes. Uh, winged eyeliners work really well. So you draw a tick at the end of the lash line on the outer corner and that will help lift this eye shape. Upturned eyes tend to slope upwards from the outer corner of the eye, giving the illusion of slight cattiness. Almond eyes tend to also be slightly upturned. These eye shapes do tend to take a variety of makeup well, although one should take the rest of the face into consideration as well. You can have a field day with eyeliners on these eyes, but remember to create the same angles on the cheekbones too. These eye shapes, varied as they are, may be differently set or positioned in an individual's face. This shape presents few challenges as far as creativity is concerned. Our model has upturned eyes and there's a pretty straightforward way of determining that. Uh, take a thin brush or maybe even a thin pencil or a stirrer would be great and just place it midway from the eyeballs towards the nose and you'll see the outer edge of the eye slanting above. And that would mean that your model has upturned eyes. If you mark the line and you see the outer corner of the eye going sloping downwards, that would meet, mean uh, downturned eyes. But very clearly here you can see that she has upturned eyes. They're slightly sloping upwards from the corner. This kind of eyes are great for any kind of makeup. They take eyeliner shapes very well and they also appear a little catty, which is great fun for anyone that likes and enjoys eyeliners. Uh, a variety of shapes can be tried on this kind of uh, uh, eye shape. Now on the same model, I'm showing you how you can d determine and describe almond eyes. Normally, people with almond eyes do have slightly upturned eyes because that is, if you see, if you see an almond uh, as it is, you will see that there's a slight slope on the outer edges of the almond. Very similarly, uh, don't go by the size of the eyes. This is not about large eyes or small eyes. It's largely about the shape of the eyes. Even if the eyes are not very large, they can be almond and upturned. In which case, in, in her case, it, that's evidently so. Um, in an almond-shaped eye, you'll see that the eyeball actually does graze the upper and lower lid. So it's not an eyeball that's surrounded by the white. The iris is never surrounded by a white. Uh, the eyelids actually graze the top and the bottom of the eyelid, and that's a fabulous way of uh, determining this eye shape. And also, almost always, almond eyes are slightly upturned. 
If the eyes seem farther apart from the nose, they are wide set. This may even be measured quite accurately by a simple measurement. If the distance between both the eyes is more than one eye width, the eyes are wide set. With wide set eyes, they seem very far apart from each other, so any makeup application should focus on bringing them closer into an average position. The standard application of light eyeshadow in the inner corners and darker colors in the outer corners will have to be tweaked to suit this eye shape. It has a lot to do with contouring and highlighting of the nose as well. Makeup should be focused at closing in the distance between the two eyes. So basically the distance between the two eyes will be short of the eyes width. Could you just help us here? So that would be the width of her eye. But when she places it exactly that on her nose, from tear, tear duct, you'll see that her tear duct is still visible from the other side. So this distance is actually still short. Her one eye width doesn't quite fit in at the, at the center of her face. So that would mean that her eyes are far set, set away from each other, away from the nose. So there'll be a fair bit of distance between the two eyes from the inner corners you'll be able to see. What's uh, great in terms of makeup is that you can actually give the illusion by pulling the eyes together. So if you see in a traditional eye makeup where you blend two colors together, you normally place a light color here and a darker color here. But in this case, it might actually work to give a small illusion of shadow closer inside so the eyes look more drawn together or contour the sides of the nose, darkening them so it doesn't look so wide apart. So basically you, you decrease the amount of light that there is in the center of her eyes. That would make the eyes come closer together into an average position. Close set eyes are set closer to the nose. If the eyes are set less than one eye width, they are close set eyes. These eyes are positioned exactly opposite of the wide set eyes. They appear closer to the nose. So highlighting the part of the nose between the eyes will put some distance between the eyes. Also, the standard eyeshadow application will work well to pull this eye position slightly apart. So on our model here, you'll be clearly able to see that the eyes are close set. Both the eyes are closer set to the nose and there will probably be less than an eye's width between the two of her eyes. In cases like this, what would be appropriate in terms of makeup is to brighten the center of the eyes, the inner corners of both the eyes, so the eyes are pulled apart to be able to be positioned in the right manner on this face shape. Deep set eyes tend to give the illusion of being sunken and deep inside the face. The bones around the eyes, such as the brow bones and the cheekbones, look prominent. Using fresh or bright colors will bring the sunken eyes back to the fore. Using very deep colors as contrasts in the crease will set these eyes further back into the face. Every effort may be made to bring deep set eyes forward. Highlight colors on the eyes or metallics will work very well to achieve this. Excuse me for not using my hands. I'm just going to point out with a brush uh, because my hand will be quite stubby. In fact, I'll be covering up the area that I intend to describe. So as you see here, we have a perfect example for deep set eyes. If you see her profile, you'll see that her lid is very visible, her bone, this bone, the brow bone is very visible and so is the cheekbone. And the eyes are quite set quite deeply into her sockets. This is a typical example of deep set eyes. You'll be able to see a lot of the lid and the crease is also quite definite. Now, in, a, in an eye shape like this, while it is flattering, you can do a hell of a lot of beautiful uh, eye makeups in this, uh, with this eye shape. But having said that, could you look straight up? If you notice when she looks straight up, the crease is very definite and quite deep. So you want to avoid accentuating that any further unless the look demands it. So if, you, if she needs to look naturally beautiful, you wouldn't go too far into the crease with a dark color because that'll set her crease further and further back. Of course, there'll be demonstrations in uh, future videos, but this is just to recognize the fact that she has deep set eyes, which are far into her sockets. What will bring them out is the great, it's the correct ap application of a concealer as well. Once you conceal these kind of eyes, it will brighten and immediately they'll come back to the fore. Another thing that's really beneficial on these kind of eyes is to use light colors on the eyelids. That will also bring the eyes back to the fore and a medium color in the crease, so the crease doesn't go right back into the socket. So that's uh, how to make up or recognize uh, deep set eyes. 
A round eye shape is determined by the fact that more of the white is visible around the iris, either on the top or the bottom. Also, there will be a prominent bottom lid in the case of a round eye. While round eyes are beautiful, they do tend to give the impression of protruding. So an artist must be careful not to use products that intensify that rounded appearance. For example, using a white eyeliner in the waterline would do exactly what it should not, make the eye appear rounder. Protruding eyes tend to appear rounded and bulge outwards from the socket. The upper and lower lids are prominently curved outwards. Matte colours that are medium deep in tone will help push these eyes back visually into their sockets. Also tight lining these eyes will work so much better than lining them from outside. You can see very clearly actually that this is a case of slightly protruding eyes. Of course they also classify under round eyes but protruding because if you notice from the sides there's quite a prominent lid here. The lower lid is quite rounded and you can see that quite prominently and so is the upper lid. It's almost as if the eyeball is coming slightly out of the socket. So there's a conical shape especially in profile and if you look straight ahead you'll be able to see that her eyeballs are slightly outside not sunken in like the previous case. Also these would classify as round eyes because if you notice, if you look straight into the camera, if you notice there's a small bit of white showing through from under the irises on both eyes. In the case of round eyes there is a certain amount of white that shows around the iris. In her case it's at the bottom, it could be at the top or bottom. So it's a clear case of round eyes which are slightly protruding. There are cases in which the eyes protrude even further where you will be able to see the whites both on top and the bottom. So that will be very prominently protruding eyes but in this case there's round eyes which are slightly protruding. How to deal with all of these shapes individually will be visited in detail in an upcoming video. But for now, knowing and recognizing all of the mentioned descriptions is very important as a makeup artist as eye makeup, be it simple or elaborate, can make or break a makeup look.